assalamu alaikum welcome to all the viewers uh, this is the fourth session of the series higher education abroad aur aaj hamare jo beech mein guest hain unka naam hai dr tanzila mukhtar jinhone apni education foreign se hi hasil ki hai chahe masters ki baat kare phd ki aur ab post doc bhi wahi se kar rahe hain to unka bachelors bangalore se hai masters uk se और पी एच डी स्विट्जरलैंड एंड नाउ शी इज वर्किंग इन कैलिफोर्निया यू एस ए एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट तंजिला मैम टू प्लीज कम एंड स्टार्ट द सेशन एंड आई एम आई एम ऑल्सो थैंकफुल टू हर दैट शी इन्वाइटेड शी वॉज इन्वाइटेड बाई अस एंड शी एक्सेप्टेड योर इन्विटेशन एंड शी एग्री टू गिव अस सम टाइम एंड इनकरेज द स्टूडेंट्स सो नाउ विदाउट टेकिंग मच टाइम आई एम कॉलिंग तंजिला मैम Thank you, ma'am, for coming. Of course. Hey, everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Tanzila. Thank you so much for the invitation. I mean, it's always a pleasure to interact with students, though not directly. It's always a pleasure that I'm talking to you because you're also like about to complete your PhD. So, congratulations in advance for that. Um, as Jamil already mentioned, uh, yes, I did my uh, undergrad. I I will go through the journey that I did my undergrad in uh, Bangalore. Then I did my masters in the UK, and then my PhD from uh, Switzerland. and right now i am working in university of california uh, san francisco so i have uh, i kind of refurbished a few slides that i often use uh, during my interactions with students um just to make it a little bit funny about how uh, has my journey been uh, throughout this throughout my um i would say introduction to academia um so let's um share the presentation let's see how this works Well, there should be, yeah. Here it is, Jamil. You have to tell me if it's okay. Is it fine if I share the? Is are the slides working? Yeah, it's working, man. Okay. Uh, should I go on a share screen mode or something, or is it okay if I present like this? It, it's okay, but if you can uh, show it like full slide. Is it fine like this? Ah, now it's fine. Okay. So basically, I call um, my journey as like my expedition from local to global because I am from Kashmir, and uh, I'm pretty much a local, and I have been uh, traveling around through continents um, and become like a global person. Um, I did my schooling from Kashmir. Um, I mean, I want to tell you that what it actually has taken to be here, where I am right now. So. it was a lot of hard work i mean you uh, you have to be good in academics you have to be good in sports co curricular activities are really very important you have to be good in like debates quiz competitions it's very very important that you uh, participate in as many things as possible because you know in india uh, also in kashmir for that matter like there are so many people in your school and then you have to outperform your peers because that's the only way you can actually you know get certificates or experience and then you can write about that when you are applying for fellowships scholarships during your undergrad or your masters or phd so you need your cv to be strong enough to basically out compete other students or i would say outperform right so i was doing that when i was like you know in school and during like you know when i was in class 9th during my school i met dr kalam as well which was a very enriching experience i mean he was the president that time i represented i was among the students who represented um kashmir in delhi um we also met the state education minister in jammu so i'm telling you these things because somewhere you know at an early age i was already like trying to uh, gain that experience that has actually formed me as a person right now that you need these little things everywhere a certificate here and experience here that actually changes your personality that actually builds you as a person um so for my class 11th and 12th my high secondary school i went to delhi um, for some personal reasons and there were more opportunities of course in kashmir you know because of the lockdowns because of you know the conflict we don't have as many opportunities but uh, you know in delhi it was a different world altogether i had more opportunities 
it was difficult uh, personally because you know i <laughs> am a kashmiri kid so not used to like very hot weather so it was very tough initially but then um, i got used to it slowly and again i did the same thing i had to work super hard um, i had to be good in academics and sports good in debates competitions i worked for times of india and newspaper and education it was like a newspaper for uh, students so among 700 students i was um, like you know the, there were 10 students who were selected from delhi ncr and chandigarh and um, i also won the times newsmakers award so i may be doing research right now but i have worked in a newspaper so how how is it like you know two different things but that experience somewhere that certificate that award actually helped me uh, get a scholarship you know because i had done a co-curricular activity a co-curricular thing which was at a bigger magnitude not just i'm playing like you know cricket with my buddies but i'm actually doing something i mean not like be little in cricket but i'm just saying that doing something putting all your effort into it and actually making something out of it i mean i got to meet uh, shrimati sheela dikshit who was the then chief minister of delhi so you know everything was filled with so much enriching experiences so it was really good the whole journey uh for my undergrad i went to bangalore uh, i did my bachelor's in chemistry botany and biotechnology from mount carmel college bangalore so mounts is an all women's college um it's an amazing place because you know i made very great i mean very nice friends and i met the best of the teachers there you know they groom you to become a very strong willed person um i think that had a huge impact on me um it was too competitive because um, imagine like you know many people from all over india they go to bangalore uh, and you have to outperform because you know this is your time right before you're going for your masters your undergrad is when you need to have a good uh, percentage you need to be among the top students in your class uh, i had to work hard i had to be very good in academics be an all rounder student uh, do something extra as well I, i'm i'm good at singing so i did kind of win a certificate or two there as well um my teachers are very very fond of me they're still fond of me they think of me uh, very nicely um and i was a all rounder student there in all my subjects because you know what it took like it was 100% attendance for 3 years um i was very hard working i would always attend college i would always attend all the classes because uh, i love education i love learning new things attending classes is most important and i still feel the same about lectures because you know learning new stuff is something that's exciting that excites me uh so i won the goldman sachs global leadership award uh during my undergrad and uh that was actually a good amount of money that paid it was like some 3000 uh that paid for at least some part of my um undergrad um you know fee which was great right so it doesn't really matter that whether your fellowship like the monetary aspect of your fellowship but what is important is that this award was given to only um i guess 29 students all over india from top notch colleges and i was one of them so how did it help me it helped me for you know taking the leap to the next step so that's what you do you start somewhere and you keep building on your profile and then for the next step and the next step and the next step so until it actually you know it's a cumulative effect so you actually build on a very strong cv so this award actually helped me to get a good like you know uh, get admission in a masters university in england and also to secure uh, fellowships there so i went to do my uh, masters in um, stem cell and regenerative medicine in university of sheffield so sheffield is famous the department of biomedical science in particular is famous in england for um, you know overall like the department is very good it has top notch rating and i am one of the hsbc chevening scholars um, and that year only two people got the scholarship out of 700 people i was one of them uh, so you can imagine that you know all my life i had done this activity that activity debate symposia like attended so many things and i had certificates i had built it all up and this is what happened i had been awarded a fellowship for a fully funded masters program um because for sure england is super expensive 
um, for international students. So you have to know that. Um, I was doing stem cell and regenerative medicine. So it's an experimental course. So it is super expensive. The tuition is really very high. I mean, right now it's going to be horrendous expensive that time it wasn't as expensive as it's going to be right now so you have to know that um and no way my parents could afford this kind of money i mean no so fellowship was something i needed i mean i couldn't go on my own i couldn't take a loan because <laughs> i i wouldn't i mean you know take a loan for so much amount of money it was a lot also then you know living expenses in england they had too much so I needed a scholarship and I think it was a blessing in disguise. So I won this scholarship. It was the best thing that had happened. England was the best experience of my life. I worked with Professor Warden Taylor for my master's dissertation. I uh, say his name loud and clear because I uh, did my PhD with him, but he moved his lab to England. So i uh, sorry, to Switzerland from England. And I couldn't join him right after my master's. So I had to go back to Bangalore, return to India after my master's. So the deal is that, you know, even when I went back to India, I wouldn't like waste my time around, but I would use that time to go to another research center, which is top notch in India, NCBS in STEM, Institute of Stem Cell Biology and Regenerative Medicine, and try to gain some research experience, work on a project, learn to work with mice, learn to work with cell lines, you know, get, do like get more experience with tissue culture, get more expensive with molecular cloning, do Western blotting, all those techniques that I actually needed, those which would actually help me during my PhD, the next step. So always preparing for the next step is the key. That's what you need to do. You need to be calculating all the time that what is the next step. So I did, um, I was a junior research fellow in INSTEM with Dr. Ram Kumar Sambasivan. So he was an amazing boss and I got to learn a lot because I did a lot of mouse genetics there and a lot of molecular biology as well. So I was there for 11 months and it was a great experience. And then I went back to Switzerland because you remember my master's boss had moved to Switzerland. So I did my PhD with Professor Worden Taylor in the Department of Biomedicine now, who was in England earlier. And I was in University of Basel. And I had a fully funded PhD with Swiss government excellence scholarship. Um, again, it's important because, you know, Swiss government excellence scholarship is a fellowship that is, uh, if you have a professor who's willing to host you in a Swiss university, so you as an Indian student can apply for this fellowship. You have to submit a bunch of documents like, you know, a project proposal and your CV and many, many documents. What is most important is a project proposal and, of course, the support letter from your host. And I had a host because my professor knew me. I mean, he always jokes about it, that it's better to hire a known devil. So um, he was willing to uh, host, uh, basically host me there. And uh, I did my PhD with him. And I completed my PhD in uh, developmental neuroscience with the summa cum laude, which is the highest possible grade you can achieve. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a beautiful experience because um, Switzerland is like my second home. I love it. Um, I mean, I got to travel uh, many, many countries in Europe because Switzerland is really at the center. And then, you know, it's, it's such a convenient location that you can travel around many places. So if you're someone that who loves traveling and, uh, you know, maybe Europe is your place and you can be there and also study, also work and be focused. But at the same time, some weekends travel around and also learn more about other countries and culture. Um, so now I'm in San Francisco. So I've been here since September 2019, um, exploring the highs and lows of San Francisco. That's the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, I love desserts. Um, that's one of the dessert here I uh, liked. Um, yeah, this ha the houses here are pretty nice. I mean, some of the houses I like. So this is my institute, just to show you a glimpse. Uh, it's called the uh, LEN Eddie Broad Center for Regeneration Medicine. Um, and this is the view from our institute. This is the city of San Francisco. Pretty beautiful. It's mostly foggy here. And this is our lab. And this is my, uh, this is, these are people from my lab who are amazing. It's a great team, actually. Um, yeah, my current lab, and that's my boss. So uh, we work on brain development. Uh, but I can tell you, uh, basically, my research interest is about, like, uh, 
what stem cells are, like, you know, um, a cell, like a single, imagine a cell that can replicate itself. That means it can self renew, but it can also, it has the potential to differentiate into many, many cell types. That's what a stem cell is. And that's what I did my master's in stem cell and regenerative medicine. So I started there at a broader scale. And um, now like scientists have reprogrammed something called as induced pluripotent stem cells, which are basically these cells that are derived from skin or blood cells. So they, what they do is they reprogram the skin or a differentiated cell, like a skin cell or a blood cell. They reprogram them back into an embryonic-like uh, pluripotent state. And then, you know, imagine this. Uh, differentiated cell becomes an embryonic like um, cell and then it's an unlimited source of cell types because you have a somatic cell which is like a skin cell you can take it from a patient and you make it into a stem cell again and then you can again differentiate it into a neural cell a muscle cell any organ of your choice so that's what the induced uh, pluripotent cells they have a lot of strength a lot of potential so imagine a person who has alzheimer's uh, we can take their, uh, the patient's skin cells, um, reprogram um, those skin cells, make them into stem cells. And those stem cells can be then differentiated into any cell type, like a heart cell, an immune cell, or for that matter, a nerve cell, a particular nerve cell. And to understand what actually happens in any disease, for example, Alzheimer's, you can then, you know, do many other techniques. You can look at the molecular basis of any disease uh, using these cells. Um, so what we work on is the brain. And I, <laughs> during my PhD, um, worked on mouse brain, which is like many magnitudes smaller than the human brain. But the basic architecture of the mouse brain is very similar to the human brain. So you know this uh, how, if you look at the cross section, so this is the cross section of a human brain, the human cortex. Uh, and these are the, this is the ventricular zone where you have the stem cells, then you have the stem cells give rise to uh, the different cell type, which are called as intermediate progenitor cells. Then there are these blue ones, which are called the outer radial glial cells. So, so on and so forth, and all these types of different neurons. Uh, so we are trying to understand that how all these neurons and how these blue cells, these radial glial cells, outer radial glial cells, how these IPCs, intermediate progenitor cells, how are they formed? How are they changing? What is the molecular basis? Like how are they changing over time? What's happening? And to understand the complexity of the brain development, like, you know, it's, it's exciting because we want to like understand how they migrate, how these cells are migrating. For example, this is like a section, I said, a cross section of a, if you section the mouse brain like this, this is what it looks like. And then you can look at the expression of different proteins in the mouse brain. And you can look at the signaling and transcription networks with like, you know, different proteins are signaling to each other. And there is like a lot of interaction happening between different proteins. So you can look into all that. And this is a cross section of a human brain. So we can study like evolution, like functions of different uh, proteins with respect to evolution and structure. And then what's important is also another interest is um, examples of brain disease. So one interest of our lab, and also I'm interested in this, is to study uh, um, lesencephaly. So as you can appreciate here that, you know, this is a normal brain. And in lesencephaly, there are no folds in this brain. So you can see the difference here. So I'm trying to only, I think, say it in a simple way that, um, we are interested in looking at some of the disease. And um, of course, there are people all around the world looking at different aspects of like, you know, different disease, uh, different, like, you know, molecular diversity of how, what kind of cells are like, you know, present in the brain. And this is one of the disease I'm interested in to see that why in this particular disease, there are these, like these folds are missing. So what is, what does, what causes actually this disease? Um, and what are actually the implications and how can we rescue it, if at all? And um, what people have now done is basically imagine there's a patient, as I gave you an example of Alzheimer's, and you ta you've taken the skin cells and you made stem cells. And from these stem cells, people are able to derive these mini brains. They're like these small balls. They are called organoids. 
And we work on these organoids as well. So basically, these stem cells have an inherent property of self-organizing, and they become like these little balls. And if you um, if we grow them in these culture devices and these flasks, you grow them in a big scale. You can grow them in uh, labs, and this is what they look like. And when you section them again, cross section, and you look at different like you know protein expressions, this is how beautiful they look. You can look at like you know the organization of these organoids, and imagine this that you have a stem cell line from a patient and a stem cell line from a normal person. And then you can compare them and see that what cell types are different, what is happening, what is happening in a disease condition. So you can look at malformations and abnormalities. So you can do so. This kind of research has a lot of potential. So we can do all these kinds of things. Yeah, I want to leave it you with this quote. I mean, two of my favorite quotes. Um, one is from Maya Angelou, um, which is that if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. So I think one important thing is that uh, never settle down for something that's obvious. Like, you know, always find your own niche, what's um, what you like, that's important. Don't, I think, settle down for what society expects of you. I mean, if you think that your heart is pinned at something and you think that you have the guts to follow it, you must follow that. And that's what I have done. And uh, this is my favorite quote that's actually in all of my emails. And it says, if you hear a voice uh, within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced forever. Um, and this is from uh, Vincent Van Gogh. So yeah, that's important. So you need to silence all the voices they, which are negative. That's all. Uh, thank you so much, Tanzila. So uh, now there are many questions, basic questions, like uh, uh, with respect to higher education abroad. So uh, like you have seen that uh, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, the level of education, which is also good as compared to other states. And other thing is that uh, you have an experience of many countries around the world with respect to higher education. So first, uh, what is your suggestions to students from Jammu and Kashmir or other part of the country? Uh, who wants to pursue higher studies abroad, like in engineering, management, bi biology, science, etc. So, and uh, second question is that, do you have any idea of scholarships like in UK or Switzerland for higher education, for Indian students especially? So first of all, I think, as I mentioned during like my uh, presentation as well, so what is important is a very strong CV is very, very important whenever you're looking for like, you know, higher education opportunities. So there are many, it also depends on what subject you're interested in. Um, so for example, I can tell you mostly about biological sciences because, you know, I know in England, you know, it's very expensive to study there. There are very few scholarships available in England. For example, there's a Commonwealth scholarship, there is Chevening scholarship, there is also, um felix but felix may not be supporting they felix may not fund actually um biological sciences then you have there's roads and roads is for only a few universities so sometimes what happens is the universities it, themselves actually have some bursaries some fellowships as well so there is no harm in actually going and writing to the admissions office of the university and telling them so listen i have this, this issue financially I have got an admission in this university. What is the financial aid I can receive? There is another thing, Aga Khan fellowships. They are not 100%. They are like, um, they are based on like a loan kind of a thing. But I think the, uh, what is it called? Um, you know, you pay a really small amount back to them. So, you know, you don't have to like, it's not as like a bank loan or something like that. So that I remember as well. In England, it's very like few opportunities. But for example, if you're wanting to go to Germany, I think there might be like more opportunities. Uh, like dad um, scholarships are there, like dad fellowships. Um, there are other countries as well. I think that's why you need to go on like individual. First of all, the student needs to go on the university website make a choice, what is the subject of your choice? Then you need to find a university which is good enough. Because why are you, even if it's living expenses for you, why will you go to like any random city? Like I wouldn't go to like some random city unless the university provides me good education, right? So they, 
for kashmiri students i know we don't have as many opportunities as students outside but i mean what do we do if we sit and keep complaining about this that we don't have opportunities we will never make anything out of our lives we need to find ways of how to do something you know there are, i know students who actually write articles they write blogs they write for newspapers all those things count they actually you know do podcasts like this all these things will count just make a group of people and write a story write a short story i mean if you want to like you know just i would say that just read read um, like you know with a group of friends like discuss some topic with a group of friends do a podcast like get more people involved in it organize a symposium right now it's difficult but do something online organize something on zoom get your college involved get your hod involved tell them issue a certificate and you can put that in your cv we have done that and you get that you know you need to make opportunities out of nothing out of thin air you just make opportunities and that's what our students need to do they are bright they just need to like you know out out like the outside their grades and every first of all their grades have to be amazing like you know top notch because i'm somebody some people might say that grades are not important it's not good i mean it's okay if you have 50% no for me grades are important because when you go to a foreign university and you show them that your grade is only like 50% they are not going to like it you need to tell them that you are among the 0.1% of your class and then it something that's going to impress them thank you uh, you talked about aga uh, aga khan foundation scholarship and commonwealth scholarship rasmus mundus scholarship and then for usa i think fulbright uh, fellowship is also very uh, good type of it uh so do we need uh, english proficiency test in uh, uk or switzerland like toefl ielts switzerland because i went for a phd there so i did not have to show any english proficiency but my masters was from england so i don't know but i'm also from i mean you know i had a english proficiency from uk because i studied in england i did do ielts so i did have a certificate so they did not ask me for ielts but i had a certificate uh, right. but for uk you have to give ielts and you need to have like some it depends on the university i think you need to have like a good rating i think 6.5 above 6.5 or something that's what it was during my time as you explored many countries in europe as well as in england so uh, what is your suggestion uh, with respect to the monthly expenses that if we, if i want to go for higher education in germany or uh, in europe in uk so which place i should choose so that uh, monthly expenses should be low and tuition tuition fee should be less see in many european countries if you're going for a phd for example in switzerland in uh, germany you don't pay for your phd so if you're doing research you actually get paid for your research uh there are some positions in england that if you actually apply then you have to pay for your phd which is which is a very bad like deal because you if you start paying for your phd you will have to like you know it's a, it's a lot of money you can't do that it's not affordable it's not good because you don't know how long your phd is going to take for your masters um again for masters you don't have to pay so much in germany in like you know for central university or something like that in netherlands i don't think it's it's not like a lot of money in england it's expensive in other countries it's not that expensive what is expensive is the living expenses so living expenses you should check for example italy may not be as expensive as um germany Germany is slightly more expensive than Italy depending on which city you are going to as well if you go to Milan then it's expensive but if you go to Germany on the outskirts not as expensive if you go to Switzerland wherever you go is going to be super expensive so you cannot go to Switzerland uh, if you are not getting paid so you need to get like some fellowship or something you know if you want to be in Switzerland um maybe netherlands is a better idea and you go you don't want to be in amsterdam and maybe go to delft or something so like you know other places so hungary you know eastern european countries where there are some good uh, finland finland i think 
is expensive living there but uh, some students are also going to turkey actually so those are also like you know good options they have good so maybe living expenses i mean of course living expenses with respect to india are going to be more for us because rupee has no value only like you know thanks to modi rupee is like no value zero value but then the problem is that you know you, we have to now compare like swiss francs like you know euros and everything compared to like other eastern european uh, money so some places it also depends like you know if you are in the heart of the city it's going to be expensive if you are in milan if you are in rome those places are expensive so uh, if someone wants to go for higher education and he thinks that uh, i will do part time job to meet my monthly expenses so uh, what about that part time jobs are they okay in switzerland or in england so i don't know people any people who in switzerland who have done part time jobs um but in england my friends used to work like do part time jobs and it was okay for them but you have to understand that in england the tuition fee is so much like during my time i don't know how is it right now the locals used to pay imagine my my uh, course was like 19000 pounds the locals used to pay only 3000 pounds so if you are british you are paying 3000 but if you are an international student for the same course you are paying 19000 18000 or 19000 that's how it's going to be so i don't know if it's changed or is it the same <coughs> you know what i mean so yeah. your upfront money that you have to give them for your tuition is going to be a lot so uske baad whatever is left is just say you have to do a job or something is going to be your rehne ka khana and every kharcha wo mm-hmm. to nikal jayega lekin jo pehla tuition fee wo to dena padega Mm-hmm. and then i also know people in germany for example they do some internships and stuff so it is possible to do internships maybe while you're doing a course or after your course finishes and after a semester of your course or something um honestly i don't know people who are like doing part time jobs while um like you know they have started a course because i don't know how rigorous they are in england mm-hmm. the courses are like one year masters and it's very tough but still somehow like you know some people manage to uh, do something but maybe canada is a better option that way that you know you will be able to do some additional and maybe the tuition fee is not as bad as for example uh, us i think people should check that and uh, as you proceed uh, for higher education just after your bachelor's from uh, bangalore so what are the documentations you required at that time uh, what are the formalities that we have to complete Uh, while going to england for higher education so i did my masters in like 2010 so i'm pretty sure that pe- the world has changed since then yes, um yes. so for me i didn't have to do much so basically i needed ielts and um, see what is important also so when you decide that you want to go to england or anywhere you don't just wake up and say okay i'm going to england you what i did i went to british council in bangalore i went through that यू नो उतना आता नहीं था कि इंटरनेट पे चेक करे रेटिंग्स क्या है तो आई वेंट टू द ब्रिटिश काउंसिल बिकॉज वहां गलत नहीं होगा एंड आई वेंट थ्रू देयर यूनिवर्सिटी रेटिंग्स बुक द लेटेस्ट बुक एंड आई चेक कि किस डिपार्टमेंट में कौन सा यूनिवर्सिटी बेस्ट है किस डिपार्टमेंट के लिए एंड देयर आई मेड अ सिलेक्शन ऑफ थ्री यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड देन आई अप्लाइड फॉर दोज यूनिवर्सिटीज सो वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट वेन यू मेक अ डिसीजन एंड यू आर लाइक ओके आडमन के यहाँ जाना है तो यू डू रिसर्च पहले उसके बाद यू एक्चुअली डिसाइड तो मैंने रिसर्च किया क्या क्या करना है उसके बाद आयल्स वगैरह मुझे करना पड़ा था तो आई बेसिकली डिड आयल्स बैंगलोर में ही बिकॉज आई वॉज डूइंग माई अंडर ग्रेड वायल आई वॉज डूइंग ऑल दिस हॉस्टल में ही रह के आई वॉज प्रिपेयर माई पेरेंट्स डिट नो आई एम अप्लाइंग और आई वॉज अप्लाइंग और एनी थिंग सो आई अप्लाइड ऑन माई ओन वेन आई वॉज अबाउट टू गो देन दे रियलाइज ओ शी इज गोइंग टू इंग्लैंड ऑन अर ओन Uh, because i got a fellowship now otherwise they wouldn't have been able to afford it right um you just need i mean of course you need a passport and you need like you know all your fellow uh, your degree wagera jo hai so they will also take your provisional degree for example we to don't get in indian university you don't get a degree only for like 2 years but you get your mark sheets right so they will ask mark, you for the mark, mark sheets, sheets na earlier when you apply so you, you will have your transcripts and everything So what happens when you apply online? Then you get a conditional offer letter, 
and then after a while they check everything and they give you an un- unconditional offer letter i mean of course and they tell you that okay i mean in england it's not difficult to get admission but then you don't have money to pay that is <laughs> right. a problem this is an issue there like as you know that uh, we have a trend uh, in jammu and kashmir or uh, in any other state that uh, while studying from higher secondary or in high school uh, we have in mind that we have to go for medical we have to go for engineering so what was your motivation that you have to go abroad for higher education when when did you decide it this that you have to go um so my dad wanted me to do medicine he wanted me to become a doctor initially my mom also wanted me to become a doctor i think until 11 12 of course they wanted it was the same it's i am like a regular kashmiri child like this. <laughs> yeah it was like that um and then during my undergrad i realized that because i studied biotechnology so i, I was from the beginning i was interested in research so i knew myself that i have to study subjects like you know study the molecular uh, level things so um so i think i'm kind of self motivated i wouldn't say that you know somebody told me when did i decide i think i knew that for example i know that i have to do something i'll find a way how to do it so that's how it was so basically i knew in under my undergrad that i have to study a particular subject so i found the universities which were basically teaching those subjects and then i just found ways how to get to those universities and then i found uh, ways to basically get those fellowships and i went to those universities you know what i mean um yeah. so that's how it was it was like self motivation and just pursuing whatever your dream was so this is how it was with me uh like there are many students uh, who just com- after completion of uh, their bachelors they they want to go for competitive exams they want to go for higher ed- education they want to try for uh, capf and many other fields they want to try so what is your suggestions for those students that uh, after completing their bachelors or before bachelors how can they uh, just set a aim set an aim and try to explore about that aim and then go for that uh, whatever they have in their mind i mean i think somewhere or the other a person always knows what they want to do i mean if you sit with yourself for 10 minutes and think what are you interested in what do you want to make out of your life uh and if you think that if you are sitting with yourself for 10 minutes and uh, you're in, after your class 12 you're still not serious enough you need a tight slap from me because i'm sorry i don't know why you're not serious enough i mean i was serious enough i knew from the beginning what i wanted and i think we are lacking in many of our students that seriousness is lacking um i am not someone who's like you know do whatever you like no i'm like i'm a very tough person i think i want other people also to think that uh, we don't have time you know you miss opportunities and they are gone so you don't get opportunities back again and again so if you are not if you have an opportunity knocking at your door right now it's not going to be there just because you're taking a bad decision and you're just sleeping it's it doesn't work like that so students need to be clear that you know if somebody wants to be a doctor you put all your effort in that it's not that oh let me just try whether i can be a doctor like what kind of a person are you if you're telling me that you will just try whether you'll become a doctor and then if you will become a doctor what is your seriousness about your job you want to basically wake up and go to work and be happy about your work for the rest of your life you don't want to be stuck in a job where you're always complaining you know so you want to be like you know to make your decision right now i mean don't be under the influence of your parents telling you become this become that you need to know where your interest lies uh, this is also a reason that some students lack awareness about these things uh, like students uh, which are who are leaving or who are studying from far off districts they don't know about higher education abroad that there are some fellowships there are some, some scholarships there are some schemes are uh, there are some universities who are providing these these courses and i have to go for that so lack of awareness is also one aspect i think as i have seen in many uh, cases like i am also uh, uh, this uh, so uh, and next uh, uh, we'll conclude this session so uh, we want your final remarks about uh, the higher education abroad and your suggestions like you have given many suggestions in this session so your final remarks 
then after that we conclude the session thank you i think i generally just say this to all the students that you know just follow your dreams follow your hearts and it's always in your mind you know it that what you want to do i mean of course your parents want the right things for you my parents wanted the right things for me as well uh at one point my dad wanted me to become an ias officer and be like shah faisal but then i know that if i mean with no disrespect shah faisal i know that if i would have become an ias officer i wouldn't have been happy with my life um i always wanted to do science so that's why what's important is follow your dream and if you decide that you want to do something in your research you know now you've taken a decision and you've told your parents that okay i'm not doing medicine i'm doing research you stand by that decision and you prove them you know you prove them wrong that med medicine was not the field for you you are the best in research if you are doing research you become the best researcher in the world if you are doing medicine become the best doctor in the world you need to put in the best effort possible in everything you do that's what is my mantra that's how i think uh that's all i want to tell youngsters and everyone basically thank you so much uh, for coming in this session and for giving us the time to aware the students and to give them what motivation tips so uh, and uh, you have accepted your invitation uh, in just a short time so i am very thankful to you and uh, uh, best wishes for your thank future you so and inshallah if some student will uh, disturb you in the future about their higher, higher education so maybe they will see this session and they will contact you uh for some tips or for some queries so do help them and thank you uh for joining this session yes thank you so much for inviting me see you guys uh, bye love is